Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. There was a huge roadmap update focusing on Alpha 3.6, 3.7 and 3.8, taking us to the end of 2019 for the Persistent Universe. We'll break this down into parts, looking at each of those updates, starting with 3.6 in this video. The 2019 new roadmap for the Persistent Universe is less aggressively scheduled and contains items they have a high confidence in making it in on time even with any plugging and rescheduling they might need to do with Squadron 42 items. So with a bit of luck, this might actually mean that fewer items actually get pushed back or delayed, and potentially we could see some extra bits and pieces make it into the roadmap later in the year. Star Citizen Alpha 3.6 is the quarter 2 2019 release that should be live by the end of June. Ships wise, we have listed on the update um, updates for the Vanguard Warden. We know that they plan to unify the ramp with the Hoplite variant, so you're getting a larger ramp with that Vanguard's uh, whole series now, and rework the central module and rebalance the ship. They weren't working as intended, but obviously there's a new flight model as well. We also have the P-72 Archimedes snub making it in, the Origin 890, um, which is the mighty space yacht. Now, that is one of my favourite ships in the game. I think it looks beautiful and amazing. Uh, and there's also a revised version of the Merlin P-52. New weapons-wise, we have the Apocalypse Arms Animus Missile Launcher. A missile launcher for FPS use, uh, bearing S-38 pistol. And on the ship side, Maxox NN uh, series neutron repeaters. Some additional gameplay systems are being tweaked and added. Weapon attachments allowing for players to uh, customize personal weapons. Uh, they'll be able to change attachments on guns, such as scopes and grips. I also believe you can change the underbarrel, barrel, and uh, magazines out and in as well. They are adding a black market economy, which will have security forces searching for stolen and illicit items and responding appropriately as part of the gameplay. So we are getting some of the law and reputation systems expanded out. So NPCs and shopkeepers will be able to distinguish between legitimate and stolen merchandise. Um, this will make ship theft meaningful. This feature does also suggest that we'll be able to sell more than just um, resources that we've purchased uh, through like um, other places, through cargo trades and mineables and things like that. So more than just mining, hopefully we'll be able to sell weapons, items, potentially stolen ships, things like that. Ship rentals are also going in, allowing players to rent ships from select shops for limited periods of time. This will be cheaper than purchasing a ship without VVC which is a win to me. This is the first time I've actually listed ship rentals properly on the roadmap, so I'm very much looking forward to that. Player free look, allowing players to look away from when their weapon is sort of aimed, giving them more situational awareness while keeping their weapon trained on a known threat. Um, I'm not sure how useful that will be, but maybe it'll be cool. Ragdoll improvements with better joint uh, limits, collision, and other physical parameters, making simulations react appropriately and accurately in as many situations as possible, including in zero G. Uh, player jump V2 is going in, improving the look and feel of the current jump mechanics, including falling and landing with new animation time warping tech that reduces the number of individual animations. They are adding the misfire system, which sort of like momentarily adds misfire events um, to some of your items, which basically stops them working or put, makes them perform unexpectedly. So you could have a thruster on a ship. Um, you can feel it sort of like um, misfiring and it might affect your maneuvering. Um, weapons might overheat or degrade over time. They have a higher chance of misfiring. Your guns might just not fire or they might get jammed briefly, something like that. That's the sort of gameplay we'll see with the misfires. We will also see improvements to the item degradation uh, gameplay, tying those misfire rates directly to the amount of wear of an item. This includes visualizing the wear and degradation on items, so you should be able to, at a glance, see that something is worn as well, not just on the HUD as a number. They are expanding out the space bounty missions so that hunted NPCs can use quantum travel to evade players, 
and this should be making some of those missions a bit more in depth and realistic. Transit Systems V2, the improvements to these systems allow players to transfer between various map sections such as doors, elevators and airlocks more easily and more readily. This includes work on portal culling, making some elevators entirely physicalized while others will be partly physicalized and teleport you. It will make it seem that they're moving you. They're basically going to do stuff that's intelligent when it comes to their transit systems so that they are as efficient as possible for the servers. This also helps the systems get ready for the room system eventually, which is literally the uh, movement of air and um, atmosphere between sections. So when you open an airlock to a ship, the whole um, area vents or normalizes between the two areas you've opened. So if you're in atmosphere you and it had a toxic atmosphere, you open the doors, anywhere that's um, exposed to that would also then normalize to the um, outside area. Player Carryables V2. So this is the further developing the look and feel and depth of player item handling, including the creation of a carryable tool. And they're going to be setting up carryable items like helmets. You have to carry those around or other items that you're more readily be able to use carry around that sort of stuff in an appropriate way setting up dynamic grips so the player can correctly hold several types of object in different ways that's you know appropriate to that object ai and npc stuff 3.6 will see various improvements to ai and npcs with additions like a new bartender archetype this will allow more interaction with and from players and even other npcs with that bartender this will also see improvements to civilians walking around cities and landing zones, things like that too. Uh, AI cover usage V1 allows the AI to strategically use dynamic cover and then react to environmental changes. This expands the cover system to correctly evaluate dynamic cover in the environment and then the AI uses the appropriate behavior there. Dynamic cover options include destructible objects and environmental elements that can be manipulated to be used as cover. Players will also be able to destroy objects in the world while NPCs are using them as cover and engage in specific behavior to detect these situations and react accordingly. For some of the ship AI stuff, they're building out 3D pathfinding. So this is foundational tech that allows AI to navigate in 3D spaces by utilizing the physics grid. The path search will be hierarchical and will use various factors alongside physical data, such as graph connections of quantum travel points that they've preset. The system will scale to the size of the universe and accommodate all content, including asteroid fields, planets, and space stations. They're also going to be expanding rest stop space stations, uh, getting lots of different exterior variations. So all the stations that we have in the game at the moment, they're going to be making larger ones. They're going to be having lots of different looks to them, both internally and externally. Lots more modular pieces and assets going into that. Some other improvements are to the first person helmet, visor and HUD. They want to get those as sharp and snappy as possible because they're pushing towards a Squadron 42 release. They need that sort of stuff done perfectly. There is some underlying tech development to allow for an automated system to enable spawning harvestable entities on ground. So planets, moons and asteroid fields uh, so that the system sensibly spawns mineables and um, interesting elements to scan down. There are also several distribution and ecosystem pipeline improvements helping with the unification of terrain and distribution maps, ecosystem modeling at global planetary levels, and several improvements to terrain blending. Basically, prettier planets and biomes and all the harvestables and mineables and everything should blend in with that much better. I'm hoping we also see the end of popping in of assets so much when we're flying down from space to planet. Procedural Asteroids V2 are continuing to be developed. So this is underlying tech that determines the shape, distribution and appearance of asteroid fields, adding volumetric fog elements, mineable entities and creating ring patterns. So cool asteroid fields that are going to help expand out the verse, help fill it. Planetary ground fog will also uh, be going in, which will create varying layers of fog on top of planetary terrain to further intensify local ambience and a sense of visual depth. Some server improvement stuff. Um, they've got a client to server actor networking rework. This is going to improve the upstream part of the actor networking responsible for communicating player actions from the local client to the server. This will pave the way for downstream improvements and solve a variety of validation issues. 
they need to get servers in a place as efficient as possible um, so that they can add more and more players to a single server. Because once they've got the single server as efficient as possible, that is going to be the limit of how many players effectively could be in a single small room together. And then when server meshing comes in, they can have lots and lots and lots and lots of rooms connected together, um, seamlessly moving between them. But this is incredibly important to server efficiency and getting more players in the game. We should see more iterations to the flight model and combat on foot, vehicle and a ship, both in space and on the ground or atmosphere, um, because, you know, the new flight model would have come in 3.5 and they need to nail down the system as best they can. Balancing is going to be a huge part of this, as is tweaks to AI and NPCs, making them more interesting and challenging to fight and general bug fixing, that sort of stuff performance improvements they're going to keep on doing that this year is the year where they are trying to get the core of star citizen working as best they can this is because they are focusing on squadron 42 parts which they need to get out or want to get out in 2020 so that's got the core of the game in it that's got all the sort of like basic elements of the game for the persistent universe in it and that will have all of those pieces eventually to their final state pretty soon. So we will be getting that into the Persistent Universe is what I'm trying to say. Please check out the next video in the series because we'll look at 3.7 Alpha and the plan will be to sort of like do um, each of these roadmap updates now and then in the weekly update that I do on the weekend typically, we'll just talk about any changes there are on that roadmap. So it'll be like a, a Star Citizen quick summary of the, the news throughout the week and a roadmap update saying, has this changed? Has there been any progress on these? Has anything moved out? Please tell me in the comments below what you think about the Star Citizen Alpha 3.6 uh, planned roadmap and release. Uh, were you disappointed with it? Were you happy with it? Uh, do you think they'll be getting a load more in? Some stuff won't make it. Please Share your thoughts. Every month we have a Star Citizen ship giveaway for February. It's for a Cutlass Black and Star Citizen game package. All you need to do is be subscribed to the channel and comment on any of my videos made during the month. If you don't have a gaming PC yet or you are upgrading, instead consider Shadow Cloud Gaming. They allow you to leverage the powers of the internet to stream a high-spec Windows 10 environment to any other PC, Mac or device like a smartphone or tablet. It is working really well in Star Citizen's 3.4 branch and be sure to use the code board gamer if you do decide to check it out to get a discount. Links below. This channel exists because of its community. If you wish to support the channel further, below there are links to Patreon, Subscribe Star, and there's the YouTube channel memberships, literally the join button below this video. VIPs do get some exclusive stuff and early content as a thank you as well. If you have any feedback, suggestions, or just want to say hi, please drop a comment below or poke me on discord.gg forward slash boardgamer. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the verse.